Bronco for life, no more. Vaughn is now gone, traded today to the Rams. One of the metro area's fastest growing school districts says it needs funding to support its growth. Election day has taken on a dramatically increased sense of urgency for our school district. We're unpacking what's on the ballot in Brighton. With supply chain issues and food shortages, food bank operating costs are now sky high. How you can help with Nine Cares Colorado Shares. Four o'clock at nine news starts now. I always have Super Bowl 50. Um, you know, seeing the pictures when I was walking out, it just, you know, it just made me tear up, you know, but we always got, we always got Super Bowl 50. Uh, I always got Broncos country. That was today. Of course, most fans thought that he would be a Bronco for life, but today Von Miller clearly emotional, leaving Dove Valley for the last time after being traded to the Los Angeles Rams at an exchange for a second and third round draft pick in next year's draft. It is the end of an era for Broncos country. Fans were shocked to say the least by the news today. Jacob Toby joins us now and it's kind of a, bl a blow to the gut on a Monday. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, when, when things like this happen, when you know there are big moves being made like this one, you are always going to hear anger and disappointment from the fan base. I heard a lot of that today at the Broncos team store. Von Miller jerseys were being snatched up by the fans as they come to the realization that their superstar will now be suiting up for a different team on Sundays. I got a text message and uh, honestly, I thought my brother was lying to me. <laughs> I was like, you know, maybe an early April Fool's joke or something like that. Just, you know, definitely sad. Uh, it's definitely a, a punch to the gut, but for the team, I mean, I understand it. But, you know, it, it's not it's not easy being a fan of the Broncos right now. <laughs> uh, disappointed on the team because, I mean, like, obviously he's like a big he's a franchise player. But, I mean, happy for him. Hopefully he can get like something out of it, maybe another Super Bowl run or something. A lot of people are angry, like, why did they do it? They could have waited, let him retire here. There hasn't been anybody who's really shown that they're going to be face of the franchise. And they let their one face of the franchise go before they have somebody to follow, you know. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's kind of a, I don't know, a weird thing to do. Right now, for me, uh, Von Miller first, Broncos second right now. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that. I also met a couple at the store who was there on their honeymoon visiting from Iowa. They went to the game yesterday. We're hoping to see Vaughn play. That didn't happen. Then the trade this morning, they said this is not the news they wanted to hear on their honeymoon, guys. People are upset. It's hard for people, that, that emotional investment that people have in players, Jacob. You know it well. For sure, for sure. I, it, he's, he's one of the biggest stars that there's ever been in Denver, so it's definitely uh, going to be a, a tough thing to see, and hopefully fans you know, will start, slowly get over it, but it's going to take some time. All right, Jacob, thanks. We'll it's, be uh, seeing the jerseys for a while. Well, it's going to be interesting <laughs> yeah. because uh, Vaughn says he's going to play, and that's yeah. Sunday night football. So you'll get a chance to see him this Sunday night mm -hmm. uh, when he suits up for the Rams. Uh, I don't think they've yet determined what number he'll wear. Uh, a former Bronco actually has the number 58 with the Rams right now, Justin Holland. So the question becomes, will he be maybe so go back strange. to his college number 40 or whatever? But off to the Rams he goes. And we wish him good luck. I mean, you always hope that he plays well and, and finishes up his career in a good place at some point down the road, but gave us a lot of great years here. Yeah, 11 years here since he was drafted second overall in 2011 and uh, played the better part of 10 seasons here and uh, became the all-time sack leader and, you know, certainly leaves behind a lot Some of good for, memories. Yeah, a lot of great memories. You know, Broncos insider Mike Kliss was the one who broke the news about Vaughn's trade. He's going to join us in just a bit, tell us how it went down and what's next for the Broncos when Mike visits us at 430. The sky over Empire Field is matching many moods today. It's kind of gloomy. A lot of tears being shed for, for Vaughn. Well, it's not really tears, though, Kathy. It's more like you feel like you're about to cry, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it took that news took a lot of us by surprise today. Yeah. Absolutely. So it'll be an interesting week to watch that story unfold. Our weather story, something else that is unfolding. We continue cloudy and chilly. Let's go outside. We have occasional rain and snow showers and a series of little weather systems crossing the state will bring the best snow to the higher terrain where winter weather and travel advisories are posted. We're in the mid 30s in downtown Denver. Cold pool of air over northeastern Colorado, the northern plains and Midwest. And this is a scenario that will play out for 
one more day before high pressure returns to the area from the west. We're seeing the best chance for snow over southeastern Wyoming and the northern half of the state. North and west facing slopes, we're seeing the best chance for accumulation. That area in light blue is a winter weather advisory out through 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Rabbit Ears Pass, areas in and around Craig and Steamboat, along with Vales Pass, anywhere from about 5 to 10 inches of snow because it's a prolonged 2 to 3 a day event. We'll see occasional rain and snow showers for lower elevations, but winter driving conditions prepare for that up over I-70 and the Continental Divide. We again get the chance for a mix of rain and or snow tonight and much of the day tomorrow. And then we are done with the cold wet weather for a while, and we're going to talk about all of that coming up in our main weather forecast in just a few minutes. Election Day will have impacts around the state, but in Adams County, it could change the course of a school district. District 27J, it used to be a small district just on the fringe of the metro area, but not anymore. It's quadrupled in size just in the last 20 years. So 9 News reporter Nelson Garcia is going to show us now that Election Day holds the promise of funding for their future. In Brighton and Northern Commerce City and parts of Thornton, the homes are going up so fast. The school district is struggling to keep up, according to Janelle Asmus. 27J is one of the fastest growing school districts in the state. Asmus is the director of communications for Brighton 27J, a district that had about 5,000 students 20 years ago. 20 years later, more than 20,000. You just drive around and you can see how many new houses are going up, and that means children in our schools. And those schools, Asmus says, are overcrowded. So we are doing what the community has asked us for. The district is asking voters to raise property taxes for $16 million more funding for operations and a $515 million bond to build more schools. What we are proposing is a package that's not just going to fix the problem for today, but it's going to fix the problem into the future. But that means an increase in taxes of about $270 a year on a home with the average price of $486,000 and obstacle for those opposed. Election Day has taken on a dramatically increased sense of urgency for our school district. Asmus says it will be a turning point for District 27J. If we don't uh, address those issues, we would have to go into drastic measures, perhaps like split schedules at the high school level or even year-round schools at the elementary level. Challenges for a school district that's not small anymore. In Adams County, Nelson Garcia, 9 News. Give you an idea of just how fast it can happen. It was 2015 when voters approved a bond issue at the time for the construction of more schools. But Asmus says those schools are already at capacity. Remember, the clock is ticking. About 27 hours left for you to vote. Your ballot has to be into your county clerk's office by 7 o'clock tomorrow night. That means it's too late to mail it, of course. So you'll need to uh, use one of the state's hundreds of drop boxes either today or tomorrow to make sure that your vote is counted. We have a guide on what's on your ballot as well as where you can drop that ballot off at 9news.com. There's a coalition of neighborhood groups are calling on the city of Denver to create more sanctioned homeless sites in addition to the four sites that exist right now. And it comes after they say months of silence from city leaders to find a solution. 9 News reporter Angeline McCall spoke with them about their idea. The season will always change, even when we aren't ready. Winter is upon us once more, as it was around this time last year when, I, when we began these conversations. And again, we don't have a clear plan of action. Travis Lanker with Capitol Hill United Neighborhoods has been begging the city to do something for the growing population of people experiencing homelessness. But this is just far beyond what anything I've ever seen. For the past year, Liker has been trying to work with the city, he says with no luck. That forced the organization, along with eight other neighborhood groups, to form the Unhoused Action Coalition that submitted this letter asking for the city to create more sanctioned camps for the homeless. I'm running out of answers as a neighborhood leader uh, in terms of the best pathway forward. Associations across Denver from Colfax to Rhino, Cap Hill and Wash Park are all asking for some kind of solution. The concerns that we're hearing from neighborhoods uh, and neighbors, both housed and unhoused, is uh, what I fear now is hostilities are running at an all-time high, uh, and it's pitting neighbors against each other, and Denver deserves better than this. The solution he hopes could ease tensions. Uh, we've done our best to keep peace in the neighborhoods to the degree that we can, 
uh, but it, uh, but that can only last so long. We need the city to actually move some key objectives forward. In Denver, Angela McCall, 9 News. We did reach out to the Denver Department of Housing Stability for comment. They said their five-year strategic plan calls for the expansion of safe outdoor space beyond the COVID-19 emergency, and the 2022 proposed budget includes funds to expand these sites. We are learning more about what the El Paso County Sheriff's Office is calling a murder-suicide. Four people found dead on Saturday, two adults and two children. It happened inside of a home just north of Colorado Springs. Today, they were identified as Kristoff, Yvette, Felicity, and Barrett Kreb. Deputies believe that Kristoff killed his family before then taking his own life. The Sheriff's Office says that investigation is ongoing. The three Aurora police officers and two paramedics now charged in the death of Elijah McLean appeared in court today for the first time. A grand jury returning a 32 count indictment against those men in early September, each charged with manslaughter and criminally negligent homicide. McLean died in August of 2019 after being stopped by police on his way home. Officers put him in a carotid hold. He lost consciousness and later died after paramedics injected him with a powerful sedative ketamine. McLean's mother spoke today after the court hearing about being in the same room with the men charged with killing her son. It was heart wrenching to see them and I purposely stared at every last one of them to see if they had the guts to look at me. None of them did. None of them did. Which is, you know, that's normal for cowards. All five of the defendants are out on bond and due back in court on the 7th of January. A vigil is planned tonight in Aurora for a 15 year old hit and killed by a car on Halloween. The family of Wyatt Lobato says he was just two months shy of turning 16. He was out with friends in Aurora yesterday and had planned to go trick or treating. At about 615, Aurora police say it appears that he stepped in the path of a passing SUV at South Chambers Road and East Hamden Circle. The driver stopped and another bystander also came out to help. The bottom was taken to the hospital where he died last night. His mother says she's comforted that someone stopped to help her son and she's grateful that Wyatt was able to spend the day with his friends. At least the entire day, like he lived his life the way he always did and he was happy and he was carefree and he just like loved life and he loved the simple things. Wyatt Lobato was a sophomore at Smoky Hill High School. His mother says a vigil will be held at 6 p.m. at Mission Viejo Library in Aurora.